Hi, Katie here at Be The Change in Orange County, California. I'm here with Rick Shasana. He was a gift to us by one of our teacher training groups a couple years ago, and he's really helpful when learning anatomy and physiology for yoga teachers. So today, we'll be focusing on the spine. So looking here at the spinal column, we have the vertebra. And in between each vertebra are the intervertebral discs. These are like the jelly-filled donuts. They're shock absorbers and they hold the space between each vertebra. However, over time, gravity constantly pushes down on the spinal column and partnered with our forward slumping culture and our bad posture, these discs become narrow, dry, and then they herniate out the back. So the majority of discs that herniate, herniate posteriorly. And so it pushes into the spinal column, hitting the spinal cord and irritating those nerves, which can cause irritation down one leg or both legs. And this can be really painful. Luckily, there's yoga therapy sequences that we can do to help create space in the low back and then push those discs back into place. According to yoga, the spine is the fountain of youth. So it's really important to move the spine in every single direction to flush blood to the discs between the vertebra. So I'll be leading you in a sequence today to address the low back. We're gonna start lying on the back and then bending the knees, bringing the feet hip distance apart. So notice how that flattens the low back into the floor. So we begin all of our yogic practices with deep breathing. So we'll place the hands on the belly, closing the eyes, and begin to inhale and exhale slowly through the nose. Starting to relax the muscles in the face, the mouth, the jaw, the neck, the shoulders. Allow the breath to become slower and deeper, relaxing the musculature of the torso, the belly, and the back. So it's helpful to establish a breath ratio at the beginning of a practice. So for today, we're going to inhale for a count of five and exhale for a count of five, breathing through the nose. So exhaling all the air out, inhale for one, two, three, four, five, exhale five, four, three, two, one. So breathing into the belly, let the belly expand like a balloon as you inhale, relaxing the face. And then as you exhale, we pull the navel towards the spine, which flattens the low back and expels all the air out. So the breath is the backbone to our yoga practice, bringing in new oxygen, it relaxes the muscles, and it expels metabolic waste with the exhalation. So the focus here is the low back, and on the exhalation, the low back presses down into the floor, and we're creating space with the inhale. So we'll maintain this ratio for the entire practice. And then Tisha, with your next inhale, let's reach the arms to the sky and overhead to the floor behind you, relaxing the shoulders. And as you exhale, let's hug both knees to chest, bringing each hand in front of each kneecap. Apanasana. So as you exhale, they pull in. Inhale, press them away. Keep the hands on the kneecaps. Exhale, the knees pull in towards the body, flattening the low back, creating space. And as you inhale, the belly expands and the knees press away, creating a little arch in the low back. So you're moving with the breath. Exhale, we contract. Inhale, we expand. So focus your mind on the low back. Your body's giving you signals in every single pose. So you want to find the right amount of movement for the body. This is a great pose to do after work if you've been sitting at a desk all day because it flattens the low back and stimulates blood flow. And so we'll exhale the knees back in, pausing here. And now bend the knees, plant the feet hip distance onto the ground, palms are down by the hips. So that focused on the low back. Now we're gonna focus on the upper back and spine. So moving gesture arms, inhale, take both arms to sky, and then overhead to the floor behind you. 
Exhale, float the hands back where they started, alongside the hips on the floor. Breath-centered movement. Inhale, the arms go up, filling the lungs to capacity. See how this arches the upper back, pulling it off the ground? And as she exhales, she's pulling the navel to the spine, flattening the mid to low back, and expelling all the air out of the lungs. So we'll do this a couple more times. So it may seem like we're just moving our arms overhead, but we're moving with awareness. We're synchronizing the body, the mind, and the breath. So this becomes a moving meditation. So while you're doing this, focus on the upper back. And when the arms go overhead, imagine those vertebrae being pulled apart creating space between those discs and flushing new blood to the disc between the vertebra. Beautiful. And then exhale, we'll take the hands down, releasing them to the floor. So that targeted the upper back. So let's extend the right leg, keeping the left knee bent. So the same thing, inhale the arms up to the sky, relaxing the face, expanding and then exhale, bring the hands back down. So right now the right leg is straight. This is creating more opening in the right hip. So it's an asymmetrical pose. The focus is on the breath. So you can continue like this, listening to your low back. If you feel any pain, do not go as far, or you can modify. For those who have minimal low back pain, you can make this sequence more active so we'll take the arms overhead, Tisha. We're gonna flex the right foot. And as you exhale, you can lift the arms and the leg towards each other. The hands go to the floor, expelling all the air out, engaging your core. Inhale, the arms go overhead. The foot presses towards the front of the mat, lengthening. Breath center movement a couple more times. Exhale, low back flattens, stimulating circulation. Inhale, the upper back expands and arches. So we really want to focus on extension of the spine because we flex forward all day long. So one more time, Tisha. Exhale, we're building up core strength. The foot flexes. Good. And then you can just bend the knees, planting the feet hip distance. Pause in between sides and just observe. Notice the difference between the right side and the left side, coming back to the breath. Okay, so switching legs, let's extend the left leg out in front. Starting with just the arms, this is the first step. Inhale, the arms go up. Two, three, four, five. Exhale, lower. Two, three, four, five. So continue with the breath. Every yoga pose balances stira and sukha, stability with ease. So if you're clenching or forcing, cultivate more of that ease, more of that softness. And the breath balances the qualities of dirga and sukshma, so long and smooth. Good. One more round like this. So you can choose to stay with the arms or to make this more active, energizing the musculature in the leg, we'll add the leg on the next round. So the arms go overhead, flex through the left foot, lengthening, and as you exhale, lift the leg and the arms towards each other, contracting and expelling all the air from the lungs. Inhale, opposite directions, reaching through the fingertips, flexing through the foot. Exhale, you bring the limbs towards each other. So this is a great sequence that you can do in the morning or when you come home from work and your joints are stiff. You know, our hips get very tight because we're sitting in desks and cars all day long. So this is a great way to maintain mobility of the hip joint and engage our core strength. Beautiful, Tisha. Last one, expanding. And then bringing the hands back down by the hips. Let's bend both knees, plant the feet onto the ground, flatten the low back, and observe the effects.
Okay, so now take both arms to the sky and overhead, reach through the fingertips. Exhale, hug the right knee to the chest. So you're gonna interlace the hands around the right knee. Option one, the left leg stays bent. Option two, you can straighten your left leg out in front of you. And start to rock the right knee side to side. So we're focusing on the right hip. And what this is doing, by pulling the right knee closer to the body, it's creating more space in the low back. So those discs are being pushed back to their natural place, stimulating blood flow to those discs. So you can find an angle that feels tight in the hips, and then we'll stay here for a few breaths. It might feel good to take the knee wide and pull it up towards the right shoulder. You can make this passive by relaxing the left foot or more active by flexing the foot. Because if you have a pinched nerve, this might be pretty intense, so you don't wanna go very far. You might just go to about here and keep this leg relaxed. So a couple slow belly breaths here. You feel the belly press into the knee, and as you exhale, the knee can come closer to the body. Inhale, expand. Good, exhale. You pull it in. This also helps digestion. So from here, we're gonna to move to a spinal twist. So let's open the right arm out to a T, left hand on top of the knee. With the exhalation, you're gonna draw the knee across the body, maybe 25%. And then inhale, come back up to center. And then exhale, go across. So the right shoulder blade stays on the ground. This is stabilizing the body. And twists are really helpful because they pull the spine apart and then rotate the spine, sending fresh blood to that area. So let's hold here, Tisha, finding the right angle for your body. And you can take the gaze over the right shoulder and then breathe consciously into the left side. So as a yoga teacher, a good adjustment here is to press gently onto the shoulder and then press onto the hips. So watching your student breathe, direct them to breathe into the right side of the body, inhale, and as you exhale, you give them a gentle push. So I'm pressing the hip away from the shoulder. So inhale, breathing into the right rib cage. And then exhale, little rotation. Good. One more breath here. So usually you stay for six to eight breaths in the twist. And then with the next inhalation, let's hug the right knee back to the chest and then pull the left knee in as well. So both knees are into the chest, apanasana. You can choose to rock the knees side to side, massaging low back, and observing, integrating the effects of that last sequence. And now interlace the hands around the left knee and extend your right leg to the floor or feel free to bend the knee. So the first minute or so, you're just rocking into that left hip so one side will usually feel different than the other side. So maybe your left side is tighter. You hold or spend a little more time on this side. So choosing an angle that is comfortable for the body. Let's stay here. Once again, come back to your belly breathing. Inhale, expanding the abdomen. And then exhale, engage the core, pulling the knee closer. Inhale, expand. Exhale, contract. So you can see how we're lengthening the hamstrings, the glutes, and the low back. Everything's connected. A lot of time we experience low back pain because our hamstrings are tight and they're pulling down on the low back. So this sequence not just for herniated discs. It could be for someone with strained low back muscles or tight hamstrings. So let's bring the knee to center, taking the left arm out to a T. As you exhale, the knee goes across the body for a little twist. 25%. Inhale, take it back to center. Exhale a little further. So there's a progression. You're not going to your edge right off the back. You're not cranking your spine. You're moving mindfully with the breath and building the pose each time. So let's find a place to hold. You're welcome to rest this foot onto the thigh, onto the floor, or you can keep it elevated, whatever's comfortable and you're gonna breathe into the side of the body that's being stretched. You can take the gaze over the left shoulder, keep the neck centered. 
Slow, deep breaths into the left side of the body. So once again, your body's giving you feedback in every pose. If this is uncomfortable or you experience pain, please don't do it. Feel free to modify or go talk to a yoga therapist to find the right practice for you. So let's inhale the knee back to center, taking the gaze forward. Let's hug the right knee to the chest. Apanasana, knees to chest, and make little circles with the knees. So this massage is the low back. And then changing the direction. And we're going to finish the practice today with legs up chair. So you can take the legs onto a chair that's comfortable, relax the shoulders. You can place the hands on the belly to focus on belly breathing, closing the eyes for your final relaxation. So for this final pose, we're going to change the breath, focusing on elongating the exhalation. So we'll inhale for a count of four and exhale for a count of eight, which has a very calming effect on the nervous system, lowering the heart rate, blood pressure, and calming the mind. So coupled with this pose, legs up chair or legs up wall is called the great rejuvenator. It allows the blood to flow down the legs, creating a very calming effect as well. So you can stay here as long as you like in this Shavasana variation, maybe five minutes or 10 minutes. And the low back is nice and flat pressed against the floor. And when you're ready to complete your practice, you can bring the knees back to the chest, taking the hands in front of the knees, rock side to side. And then we'll roll over to the left side, finding a fetal position. Pausing. And then gently press your hands into the earth, coming up to seated. Hmm. So we hope that this sequence was helpful. Feel free to Call upon any of these practices if you're feeling tension in the low back. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel for more Be The Change videos. Mm -hmm.